Welcome to Navarrel Roads Online Showcase Video MIA Edition. Today is going to be about Cordwood shenanigans. I think I mentioned in the last episode that I was considering getting more Cordwood cars for my train, enhancing it from 48 bulkhead cars carrying the Cordwood up to 72. And I tried it. We are going to talk about the results of that today. But I think first up it's important to give you guys a little refresher on how my cordwood smelter operations work here to begin with. After all, it's been a while, we have a custom industry layout, so nothing's really vanilla here from how it's actually going. And to start out with, we need to go down to this area over here, which used to be in the very northeast and is still confusing why it isn't anymore. Anyways. Yeah, this is my logging yard. We have a logging camp over here and a decently sizable yard behind it. And on the rightmost two tracks, that's actually what's meant for the cordwood loading. So what happens is we come down from this line, go into the Y, go around here and then go onto the rightmost track in order to um, park our uh, empty cars over here. We disconnect the engine before we hit the switch and then we can just go on to the other side here, even turn it around with a loop and then put it into an engine shed or into our engine supply area over here, just refilling it and everything else here is going to be done using the yard goat, which I think is this one right here. Yeah, it even says yard goat over there. So this one is going to come in from the rear of the train. First up disconnect the caboose, put it onto the next siding and then get eight of the bulkhead cars at once and put it up to the loading platform. I just find that um, loading eight cars at once is a really good balance. It's not too cumbersome with inertia and how much uh, slower everything gets but it's also a decent amount that um, still lets you get stuff done in a um, timely manner. So eight cars over here is what I always go for and it's actually quite the breeze coming back to it. So the thing that I do is I load up the stuff, I then push it onto the um, um, slightly more left siding over here, the same on the caboose is on and then I reconnect the train over on this siding. And I just keep emptying out the um, uh, rightmost siding, getting more and more empties, loading them up, putting them on the other siding, and eventually the train will be reconnected over there, and then it can go back up and towards the smelter. This track right here is a 1% incline, pretty steady, but over here that's pretty much where the incline ends, and we just need to coast for the rest of it. So that's the loading procedure and also the whole journey. Coming over to the smelter, the yard here is multi-purpose and the two rightmost sidings over here are once again reserved for cordwood. They go around the outside, taking a bit of a wider turn and eventually coming back to the cordwood platform over here. And at that point we just disconnect the engine again and this time around we have another helper engine that's taking apart the train from the front with three cars at the time because after all the platform doesn't easily allow people to just do a rolling unload where you could just continue going forward. There's actually a stopper over here and I usually just take uh, three cars with a helper engine, put the helper engine up to the stopper and then unload all the cars. Works like a charm but it's a bit more tedious due to the space limitations. And as per usual, when I just go and uh, kick the cars back onto the, other, um, onto the other track running in parallel over here, and that's where I'm going to uh, completely uh, rebuild the train again, this time around empty. And the last car that's gonna be pushed on there is actually the caboose because we are kinda starting from the front and then working our way to the back of everything and in the end the last car is gonna be the last one that I'm gonna be pushing out there. So that's how it works right now. It's pretty convenient 
nothing too bad about it, but there are three problems when it comes to expanding the train. Problem number one. The sidings over here are too short. I need around 120 meters more in order to make this work and thank god this side isn't really connected to anything so I can just expand on this and shouldn't be much of a problem, need to make sure that it at least looks decent with the terrain, I think um, there is a bit of a cliff wall over here and it makes a rather sharp turn so I will still need to make uh, sure it looks decent and not just like a floaty sky bridge. But yeah, that's definitely rather easy to um, get around. Sadly, the same problem is um, happening at the smelter yard and due to it being connected on both ends, the solution is gonna be a bit more complicated and I might actually give it a try over here while recording, so that might be something for later in the video. Just to give you guys a decent idea on how I, I plan to do this. I think it's going to make the operations a bit more interesting. So slight switch up on the entire formula here, which is actually another reason why I like expanding the train. Otherwise, um, yeah, I would definitely go for it anyways, but this is giving me an interesting challenge, so I'm all for it. Um, the last thing about the train and the problem it uh, causes, we talked about both endpoints now. Over here when you load, over here when you unload, but also the journey from one to the other is just not really working out anymore. You may have seen in the last episode, I bought a class 125 for this. It can easily deal with 48 cars and the caboose, but with 72 it seems to be slightly overcumbered or overencumbered, whatever. You know what I mean, it's... Um, it's not powerful enough, I need something else. And since there isn't any more powerful engine in this game right now, I actually started double heading this whole thing, so... Let's take a look at the entire train right now as it stands here and... You will just see how enormous this whole thing is. Let's go in, around and around, another turn and... This is finally the front end of it. Funnily enough, I bought this uh, Twin C very early in the game, which is why it's um, number 5, specifically to serve as a quad wood um, engine, hence the name Woody. But in the end, it couldn't really do it, I needed another engine to help out, and in the end, I got uh, some others that were partially working out, but also not amazingly. And now that I have um, this engine, of course, I need to go bigger and that just gets everything more complicated. Also, um, the reason why I'm going with 72 specifically, as I mentioned, I'm loading the cars in batches of 8 over here. I'm unloading them in batches of 3 right here and that means that the lowest common denominator is 24 and so that's the increments in which I increase the train. So I could have gone with 24, I went to 48 for the longest time, and the next one up is 72. If I went any further, I think it would be 96. I don't see that happening, but it might just be a question of when, when, <laughs> if or something. I mean, if I went for 96, I could actually go with two uh, class... Uh, 125s, I think that might be... No, let's... Let's not do that. Let's, let's not indulge that idea. I think I got enough to do with um, everything as we have it here right now. Otherwise... Um, it would be kinda... No, no, no. Let's not do that. But yeah, we are going to try and reworking... Um, the yard over here in a moment. Just another thing I want to quickly show you guys. I did what I talked about in the last episode and just added the switch over here. I still need to make this look decent. 
this is just really a mock-up and in the end I can quickly replace this with something that doesn't have groundwork and then add something better looking here myself. But the main thing is it doesn't really change anything when I want to go up here with my uh, climaxes and the loaded uh, tanker cars. But bringing rails to the um, uh, to the coal mine is going to be a bit different now and I think it's definitely a plus for the environment over here. It looks a lot better than having those two almost parallel running uh, tracks over here. This is definitely a better way of handling things. The weird thing that I notice is that basically at this point for a moment it just evens out. And that makes me wonder that maybe I could have gone a different way. Just keep it climbing, keep it climbing up here and then maybe go over uh, the main line right here somewhere. I don't know if it would have worked, but it could have saved me the stuff that I ended up building right here. But then again, I at least want to try this once. I think this is going to be fun and therefore it's kind of fine by me. <laughs> it looks a bit ridiculous, it looks a bit um, disorganized. But in the end I think this will be good fun once I get the train rolling. But for that I need the cordwood anyways and well, it might also currently be slightly blocking the track that brings um, stuff up to the mountains to begin with. <laughs> so let's get going and let's try reworking the whole ordeal right here. So my idea for this entire thing and I think I'm going to be moving both of these tracks a bit further that way. It's going to be that you're not uh, getting onto the sidings at their ends, but more in a not quite middle part of it, but certainly a bit further ahead from the rear end here. So I think what I need, and it's going to be a bit of a space problem using the switches and everything. I want something that's on principle like this. And yeah, this is going to be why I, everything needs to move over a little bit. So basically when you get onto this track, you are going to enter the siding. You can stay on the left siding. The right one is not going to be accessible from here because it kind of doesn't need to be. And the thing is, in order to get the additional space that we need for all of the cars, I'm going to be spending in this direction. I'm going to do so with the outer track as well. Plus something like this and I hope I can make it past that um, angel shape. But then again, yeah, there's a bit of a dead end here. So this is where it would have to end. I don't think I can wrap it around here. Then again, I have another idea on where maybe to put the angel shed. So might be something that I can remove, but then again, uh, yeah, we have another few obstacles here. So this should give me the um, space that I need, but it's not going to go much further beyond that. But we already have 130 meters until we hit that. So if I just make a little bend right here. Just going past it like so, this should be alright. And this is really just a mock-up at this point. Uh, when I really lay everything out, I'm gonna be reworking that part first to get um, enough space for the switch indicator and everything else is gonna follow that line. But yeah, in the end, um, the tracks are both gonna be coming through this way and they are going to have another switch at the end here. Something like this with a bit of runoff behind here. And the other side I might as well quickly connect it to that as well. I need to first uh, bring it a bit closer here so that it doesn't give any error message. 
So this is on principle what it be um, looking like. And when the fully loaded train comes in here now, the way it's gonna work is it's gonna pull onto the siding and go all the way up front. Uh, coming all the way around there and going past the bridge here and through the switches. And the interesting thing is that a while ago I not only connected uh, the unloading platform for the iron ore to this, but also it's now doing a full loop and we don't need the entire space. But the important thing is we have enough space to get really deep in here and clear the switch with the caboose. And at that point we are gonna be maybe somewhere up there with our front. That should be alright, no problem there. And the thing that we need to do back here now is um, when we come in here, the switch is gonna be flipped like this. We are going to disconnect the caboose, flip it over, and then we are going to reverse back into the siding. And we should make sure that we don't ever go past the switches of any of the bulkhead cars. But the good thing here is that the caboose can now go further. It will be stopped at the end here somewhere. And at that point, uh, once we start actually taking the train apart at the, at the unloading platform and put everything back on the other track, it's basically going to be reconnecting here. All the bulkhead cars are going to be coming through here and linking back up with the caboose and that's how we are going to reassemble the train. The big difference to before is that this time around we're not going to be um, reassembling it um, the opposite direction to where it came in from. We are going to be assembling it back in the same direction because what's really making that determination is at which po at which ends of the train the caboose is going to be stationed. And it's going to be staying in the same direction as it was before and that means we don't even have to turn the engines around. I may also build another engine shed over here or move that one over. Because the, the engines from this train are going to be cut away from the train over here. And if they don't need any resupplies, they can just stay in this engine shed and wait for the next turn. That's really gonna be cutting down on the amount of uh, movement you need to do here for them. Be because after all, you disassemble the train over here, you reassemble it on the other side, and you are putting the engines basically in at the exact same point where you took them away from the train. So that should be working out pretty well. But yeah, first up, once again, I need to do this in a better way. So right now, everything that I've done so far was really just for the mock-up. And I should have maybe left the switch here. Let's just get something in. Just as an indicator on how long the track was beforehand. Just so I can lay out something that's a bit longer and hopefully fitting in the switch on that side. Still want to go with um, zero radius right here. Or more like infinite radius because we are going straight. And I think if I do it like this we should have enough space. Gonna be interesting reworking the um, curves and everything but uh, it's likely not gonna be too much of a problem. Yeah, I definitely took the wrong switch there. I need this one to have everything here and yeah, this might be a bit far. So let's try this again. The funny thing is I was also considering maybe showing you guys the um, rework of the other side, but I think despite the overall more complex um, stuff going on here, just the fact that everything that I'm working with is on even ground, it's gonna be easier than on the other side. 
making it um, terrain conform is gonna be more of a hassle than this right here. And yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with um, this distance. So let's get rid of the other stuff that we don't need right now. And yeah, the next point would be getting the um, this thing lined up. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to be doing the curves yet. I used to go with a little uh, pattern here using the um, crossover pieces. I might do that again because unlike with um, the whole duplicate um, spline thing, it uh, allows me to at least uh, snap everything together. A spline uh, uh, tool uh, lacking that is really a bit of a detriment here. So let's bring this down to a decent radius, something that we can work with. I always try to stay above um, 60 meters, I always heard that it is like a minimum viable radius for a lot of things in um, terms of trains and uh, track laying at least for narrow gauge, so yeah, no real idea about it, but I think it's a good standard to have. Has been working out so far. And for some reason I wasn't even in flying mode where I would like to have a bit of a bird's eye view at everything here. I may also have used multiple splines for the curve, but no, this might be still alright with only one. Uh, maybe something like this here. Let's see where it goes if I just pull it straight. I don't think I'm gonna be getting it straight, but maybe... Okay, that's way off. Another option I have here, and that's also something that I like to do occasionally. Let's delete that spline again. Let's delete the inner one because we don't need that anymore. So I like to do things in approximation and then just cut it down so that it fits with a snapping point. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a straight that I would like to have in the end. Now I'm gonna go back to the other side. I'll pick a radius that I like for the um, curve. This looks like a good one and let's see, this is almost working out. I might need to go a bit wider, this is maybe already a bit too wide, but this is working. So now at least I have some uh, points where they intersect, or at least almost. I think making this go further just made everything else uh, look a bit worse. Now let's get rid of the uh, straight spline and relay it again. And I put it back to zero meters and now let's find the middle point. I think somewhere around here, let's go a bit more gradual. Yeah, I think uh, something about around this is decent. And now I should have a decent snapping point in order to create my corner that I want. So let's just bring it back over and try snapping it to this point. And I hope we are going with the outer corner. Uh, let's um, delete the inner one. I hope. No, okay. I'm not always sure about it, but it seems like um, the inner one was a bit bent in the wrong way. You know what, let's just, let's just try doing this um, with straight up snapping. If it doesn't work, I may need to use another um, spline in between. Because this might be a bit uh, long. Ah, 
After all, if you make the band too long, you're not really getting a good radius anymore. Something that I really don't like about the latest update. Beforehand, you could always kind of pick which direction you want the spline to go, but now it's always uh, picking something for you and it's not always the one that you actually want to use. So maybe if I go from this side, why is there the shadow of a floating tree over here? Okay, that's working out. So I'm now looking for a radius that follows the one that I have here already, just to see if it's gonna be um, sticking with it or if it's um, gonna be going in or out. Yeah, because at this point you can see while it um, sometimes distorts the stuff that's being laid out behind you, the point that you are following right here that's usually seeming to do the um, correct corner radius, so something's definitely off about the one that I laid out here. And yeah, that's not amazing. See if I can find a well fitting one again. I think this might be the best. And let's just lay it in two parts. I think that should be better for the overall look. Yeah, doing it in one, it just um, ended up going way too far on the inside. This one should be more like an actual radius. And I think I even put the middle part pretty much in the center of a corner. I could have maybe gone a bit further, but that's really nitpicking. So that's how I usually do this stuff if I want a decent connection between multiple points. The question is how I'm gonna do that for the other side. I mean, this one is definitely not anything to um, take into account anymore. Gonna need a new version of that. Uh, I think I could actually use the um, new tool for that. So what I'm gonna do is just lay a parallel to my other track just so that it always snaps and I already noticed that apparently the last few bands weren't really parallel in the end so I might have to rework this, uh, this whole thing as well. But yeah, the bridge it may have been closer together. Back then this was really um, a, rudiment a rudimentary way to do this entire thing. So it didn't all work out too much in the end, I was just approximating. The problem is if I try to use the um, parallel tool on this, it's not gonna give me any snapping points. But let's try it anyways. Okay, that's looking good. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be using just the track that I just created from this as a snapping point for my um, straight line here. And then I'm gonna be redoing that whole thing anyways because that's currently not really snapped towards the bridge. It might work out if I drive over it, it might not, I would rather snap it myself and make sure that it's uh, functional. But we can also check now if this is actually um, a radius, a proper one, or if it's just um, yeah, not really working out. Once again, not giving me the um, thing I want here. Hope it works better on this side, otherwise I may need to... Jesus. Get rid of it beforehand. Okay, what kind of band we have here? That's almost 90 degrees, might be something like 80 or so. 
So I should be definitely using uh, multiple uh, splines for this and not just a single one. It's a pretty good approximation for the, the radius. After all, I think I used the radius tool with um, some value that I put in there the first time around. So it should always kind of line up. So at least the parallel track tool has given me the option to um, get a better copy of um, this track right here. I think I should also del delete this and just uh, try turning it into two splines again. Although this is looking decent. So let's do this whole thing again. I, you know what, I may as well copy over the parallel track here. Of, um, that was not the tool that I was using. Another thing I noticed about a lot of um, different um, elements here. For example, just the radial menu here. If you go to the bottom right, you can actually drag your mouse all the way off the table, like 20 centimeters in the same direction. As soon as you come back like a millimeter or even less, you're gonna go to a different uh, option there. I like that you don't have to come back all the way, but this kind of makes it sensitive in a weird way. Like if you uh, try to loosen a brake, but before letting go of it, you accidentally just kind of swipe to the right again. It's it's a bit weird. Anyways, parallel track or copy track, whatever. Uh, something like this. That's good looking. Definitely gonna be extending it a bit further. So this is once again only for the snapping point. And let's find a good radius here. Likely gonna be better if I go up um, with, uh, with my grid and not just try to get there in one meter increments. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Let's try and find about the middle here. And then bring it back like that. Yeah, that's a good looking piece of track. That's definitely, that's definitely not making my yard look any worse than it was already. So pretty happy with what we got here. But yeah, besides that, I just need to um, add a bit more track here, move it past the engine house. Just try to get the most space out of this. I mean, maybe not the most. If I go way too far, then that's always gonna be more travel time in the end. But I'm gonna make sure that once the train is fully on the siding, once it pulls back into here, that it's actually fully on there and doesn't intercept wherever I put the new switch over here and also not on the other side. So that's the main goal now, but I think I'm gonna be doing the rest of just off screen and you're going to be seeing the results in the end in the next episode hopefully also including uh, what i need to do on the other end but yeah it's always a good idea to do some of it off screen especially the finer details but i also want to show you guys some of my ways of approaching these kind of things in order to make it look nice in order to make it work out and yeah Everything else that I'm going to be doing here is just basically more of the same. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time. Have a good one and bye bye.